Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. This is another deflating and escaping atheism. We're here for October 24th, 2017. Uh, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. We also need your financial support and your spiritual support. So there. Also, just so you all know, John C. Wright will be back tomorrow night, and we've got other interviews lined up for this week, so there's going to be plenty going on in this channel. Do stay tuned. Uh, Rob, what have you been up to lately on deflating atheism? I saw uh, you had a response to logic, was it? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, I just found my microphone, so you could check my levels. I'm, I might be really booming right now. But, uh... Yeah, uh, I, I did a response to yeah, logic. Actually, actually, dude, you're way hot. You might want to back yeah. it down. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Well, you do that. <laughs> no, I, I can't adjust it on my end. You have to, like, lower your voice or back off from your mic or something. I can't adjust it. Yeah. Um, okay, so anyway. Um, do you want to start this again? No, no, we're all right. Uh, hey, guys, we still could use your financial support. Uh, <laughs> that'll no, give us part of my part. better. That'll give us better resources for things like this. Now, listen, uh, what's new on your channel? Is it the response to logic? Yes, yes, and uh, and uh, Christopher missing the mark, and I were both uh, we're both really taken aback with how many uh, supportive comments we got uh, from our responses. So I, I think there is kind of a, a sea change that's going on here. I think there is a sea change going on, too. I mean, I think it's only the beginnings of it, but um, we may be seeing a real flip, and the, the so-called skeptic mafia may be in trouble. I mean, yes, they just started doxing me. Somebody within the frame of uh, going to go for it, that strange Dutch guy I had a hangout with on Saturday. I don't want to rehash that. I already rehashed it with Andrew last night here on this channel. Uh, but, you know, coming into the comments, naming my ex-wife, my my kid, my wife, uh, where, you know, trying to guess where we live and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, unfortunately for these guys, I'm kind of a pro at this and so is my wife and so is my ex-wife. We're not afraid of you. However, this is why I ask people to stop using my, my legal name. I work under the name Max Kolbe for a reason, and one of them is I like to keep my family out of these things, uh, at least unless when they want to get involved. And respecting someone's privacy, you don't have to, but I'll tell you what, it says something about atheist character when they do this crap. Mm -hmm. It really does, and it's why... People don't like atheists, damn it. Somebody ought to tell you people that you're disliked, and it's not because you're so damn clever. It's because you're so damn awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, and, that's, a show. that's a show. Huh? Yeah, that's a show. We're done now. That's in there. Mic drop. <laughs> Boom, we're out. No. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to show you something, Rob, that will make you smile. Um, yeah, well, can you just tell me how I'm sounding now? You sound great. You okay, sound great. Okay. Now. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's right. I, right, Rob, right. Uh, I got off on a rant there. I'm sorry. So, yeah, you got a lot of support from that Logic video, and good. Now I want to show you something else that will put a smile on your face. Now, I don't know who Cliff Neckley is, and I'm probably butchering his name. Cliff Neckley. Uh, is how I'm going to guess has how he pronounces that, and you're going to see this, and 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 you're going to smile. I'm only going to show a minute of it. This is on the channel of One God Only One, who I think is Ellie Catholic, but I can't remember. But anyway, I, and, and this guy might be too. I don't know, but it, it, this is a real good discussion with a young man. Um, so here, watch this. You're only Christian because you were brought up here. Excuse me. You want to say rewrite that one. Why that one by me one more time, that last sentence? That you're only... Come on, come on, give it to me, bud. That you're only Christian because you were here. Born here. Or in... Or in How on earth do you know that? <laughs> How on earth do you know that the only reason I'm a Christian is because I was born in the United States? It's not an attack on your belief. How do you know what you just said? It's an assumption. 
It is so judgmental. It's scary. I would never treat you that way. That is so disrespectful to do what you just did. You don't have the faintest idea why I'm a follower of Christ. But isn't it a statistical problem? I mean, I, I, forgive me. If that's not true, I apologize. You better apologize. That's off the, off the wall, rude. I don't have the faintest idea why you believe what you believe. And for, for me to assume that you believe whatever it is you believe, because you were born in the home you were born in, is so judgmental. It's incredible. You don't know that. I just, I, I loved every second of that. Yeah. I'm like, all right, a Christian, another Christian has finally figured out that yes. really when, 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 when an atheist is being a punk, push back, please. You're yes. entitled to. Um, and that didn't turn into an altercation. You should go ahead and watch. I'll, I'll try to remember. I'll get this in the low bar and on, on escapingatheism.com. It's worth watching the whole nine minutes of it. Um, he, he may, I mean, they, they, they wind up getting along, right? Um, and I think that's something else to remember. I, I, I have to just mention this because, uh, uh, a lot of young men especially have grown up fatherless and have grown up ill-mannered as a result. And furthermore, most of them are actually seeking a male authority figure to actually set a damn boundaries for them. Yes. It's true of young men even in their 20s and even in their 30s and to some extent all throughout their life, but really especially young men. And they don't have it. I think that's part of why we have this, this, this ridiculously shallow atheist culture. Uh, I, I, I think fatherless men, young, fatherless people in general get scooped up by these atheists with these talking points. Uh, and, I, and, and that's a talking point. That whole... You only believe that because you were raised to believe it. I'm so sick of hearing that talking yeah. point. It's not well, only not only my... Huh? Go ahead. It may not be immediately obvious because I, it has become enshrined. I mean, I mean uh, Dawkins falls back on it, certainly. So it may not be uh, immediately obvious to some of the atheists who, what why that's so presumptuous to say. So I, I think we could explain that, is that you're basically... You're, you're basically trying to take away the validity of a person's beliefs. You're basically trivializing a person's beliefs uh, on, on absolutely no pretext at all. It, it, it's like, how, how would you like us to say uh, you're only atheist because uh, atheism correlates with, uh, with uh, Asperger, with the autistic spectrum? Okay, well, I, I just took away the, the, I just trivialized, I just belittled your entire belief system. So Although it is always worth considering, right? I mean, yeah. serious Christians I knew who were raised Christian, who were pretty much all, also always Christians, most of the serious-minded intelligence ones I know went through a serious phase and said, why do I believe what I believe, or went yeah. through a period of doubt, and then began investigating until they satisfied themselves in their mind that what they believed was correct. And by the way, if you keep meeting these people who've wandered away from the faith and said no one could rationally explain it to them, there are resources for anybody who wants it rationally explained. Yeah. There really are. Um, if you went up, if you grew up in a church area where they just didn't have anybody who was smart like that, seek smarter voices. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very old to just say you believe something like that for just that reason. That's like... I mean, and, and, and what's so insidious about that is that's true of almost anything anyone believes. Yes. Let, like, I mean, like, almost anything you believe is going to be a product of what you were taught, raised to believe. But atheism. Notice the, notice the arrogance that's in there of, oh, but I secretly have snapped out of it. Yes. I know the truth now. <laughs> Well, that is that is the thing. And, and as we mentioned, I was looking at that Pew data that, that shows how there are pockets of atheism within the United States, certainly. I mean, if you, if you go to Seattle or like Stockholm, certainly you're much more likely to be an atheist. So, so it, does that trivialize? Does that somehow take away the validity of atheism simply because we can point to certain geographic regions where you're more likely to be an atheist? I, I mean, if atheism was simply a matter of these people, you know, breaking the chains of their childhood indoctrination and just reaching for free thought, that's all there was to it. It seems like it should be evenly distributed among the population, but it's really not. You, you get definite clusters of atheists in certain geographical places. Yes, in certain gen genetic groups. In, in yeah. fact, that's, 
<laughs> I, you know, you got to be careful looking at race realist data. You really do, but you can't just say it's all garbage. And uh, one thing that's real consistent in anything that looks at racial groups, black people will never be atheist. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, you've got to work really hard to make black people atheists. Just for well, example, and it's just. That was the thing that, 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 you know, when I was an atheist, I knew things like this, right? That, that it was just normal uh, for people to be religious, and they didn't particularly need to be shaken out of it. I never thought that either. I, I, I thought them odd and wrong and whatever. You know, I, today, atheists, the young ones, they believe crap that's just such crap. Yeah. Well, as I said, I mean, Dawkins has, has enshrined that genetic fallacy in, into the whole atheist vocabulary. That, it, it's, it's, it's bad argumentation that's, that's basically uh, uh, been codified into atheism by Dawkins. He says it, so, so it's a good argument. Well, not just Dawkins, because I think there's a whole freight train of this crap in, and it's in the schools. It truly is. It's not that they teach evolution per se, but I, I, I hear more and more stories of it, just um, teachers lying about religion and history and, mm. and not being willing to correct themselves. And I believe it now when I hear stories of some, you know, somebody who teaches psychology just indoctrinating students and telling them that prayer doesn't work and pointing like, to the, Yes. Uh, like Heath, yeah, because um, there are psychologists who talk that way now, professors who talk that way. And uh, that, by the way, is not a scientifically valid assertion. It's simply not. By the um, way, do you there are some studies, some meta-studies and such that have been done, which in some contexts showed no apparent effect from prayer. On the other hand, if you look at who funded those studies and the ideological biases behind them, you have much reason to question it. And we have other peer-reviewed research that shows yeah. prayer does indeed work. And is healthy. Sorry, but anyway, I, what were you gonna say? No, well, for for my uh, admittedly uh, uh, layman's perch, uh, I actually notice a lot more kind of corrosive ideological atheism coming from the soft sciences rather than the the hard sciences. If if you look at like psychology, I mean, look at the magazine Psychology Today. It is so unapologetic. It has such an unapologetic editorial bias towards atheism. Uh, it, it's a complete joke. But yeah. And I see Sociology and psychology, they're always trying to inject this this atheist bias in, into some sort of a finding. That absolutely everything has a psychological basis in psychology, yeah. And I've talked to, uh, by the way, atheists tend to all think they're experts at psychology. Have you noticed this? Um, but, I mean, if you look at the field of psychology itself, the peer review system is totally melted down there. Total crap gets published all the time. It's actually been acknowledged by scientists for some time that while there are certain things in psychology that can be called science, there really are, and there are a few psychological methodologies that have a proven track record that really do work. Like for example, there's hard evidence that cognitive behavior therapy actually works, um, which is not true of most forms of psychotherapy. Most of what goes under the name psychology is just amateur philosophizing by, by well, the psychologist in question. <laughs> it just, it's, it's ridiculous anymore. And you see it so much from, from internet atheists. I mean, what is that when, when atheists use their genetic fallacies? They, they use a, a kind of bullshit ersatz uh, nickel and dime uh, uh, sociology or history. They say, yo, religion was mankind's first attempt at explaining the world. And they throw out assertions like that. So... <laughs> All you need to say in a, in a situation like that is just like citation, please. Can you give me a citation on that? And then they yeah. also the ersatz uh, psychology, which is you only believe because you're afraid of the unknown and you're un afraid of death. And you could say, okay, where's your evidence of that? And if you know so much about my life, please tell me, please give your evidence that my parents are Christian and the only reason I'm, I'm a Christian is because of them. So give me that evidence. Uh-huh. So it's criminally easy to trip them up on this. I don't know what this message I'm getting is, but yes. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Uh, I also have a, a, my other story, but you can continue on what you were saying. Well, I don't know what I was saying because this was going to be a kind of a free form uh, stream, actually. I mean, we got started <laughs> off on on that. I, I can't say Kurt Nick Plea. Did I say that right? Uh, and, and actually, one more thing I wanted to 
put out there. I wanted to give somebody, everybody a reference on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, I recommend following somebody called Peer Review Botter. And there's a few others in there. Uh, but if you follow people like Peer Review Botter and others, you're going to see how in the sciences, this is not, I'm like, not like giving you a Christian sermon. I'm giving you a completely secular science notice here. The peer review system truly has melted down. And it's in one of the worst is, of course, all the social sciences. Yeah. It's not clear that even 1% of what gets published in things like psychology journals is scientific at all. It's ludicrous. So anyway, yeah, what we were going to do tonight is I was going to let Rob here asked me any question he wanted as regards to my own, I don't know, travel out of atheism. I had, or my own experiences with atheists, because we did him last week. I asked him about how he got hit. I know that, 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 that the, the, although there were a number of moments that led to my leaving atheism, I know that it did start when I got uh, ganged up on and bullied by people at free at what is now known as free thought blogs yes uh but it was prior to free thought blogs when they were running something called science blogs doing very little actual science on science blogs by the way um and a lot I of real ex ideologue scientists um okay can, can i just interject because i i i, re I remember that and uh it, it just goes to show when atheists claim they love science they, they really don't give a shit about science so science blogs was uh, uh, this this exactly what it says science blogs and a bunch of contributors, but I think the the linchpin for the whole thing was PZ Myers. Am I correct? Well, I know certainly Free Thought Blogs is his brainchild, his okay. his distorted mutant brainchild. I'm pretty sure what actually happened is I mean science blogs was always pretty weak. Yeah, uh, well, no, that's, that's what I was going to say. They always had this low. They always had this low kind of baseline of traffic when it was actual science. When they're actually discussing science, there's a low baseline of traffic. But whenever PZ Myers would go on some anti-religion rant, of course they would get a traffic spike. So what they had on there too was pharmaceutical company whores and people just spouting. Um, uh, like there was this guy who went by ORAC. I mean, it eventually turned out, yeah, he was paid big time by pharma. But his main thing was to just attack as a so quote, quote unquote skeptic anybody who was currently giving the pharmaceutical industry any trouble at all. Mm -hmm. And he was vicious and nasty. So you had political hacks like that. And you had PZ Myers, who was a political guy. And, and they all tended to be real lefties. And I think it just got to be too much. And that's probably part of why free thought blogs happened because the scientists who actually wanted to do science didn't want anything to do with PZ Myers. Yeah. Why would you, why would you, by the way, PZ Myers is in no reasonable sense considerable as a scientist. The only way you can call PZ Myers a scientist is because he has a PhD. He does little, he, 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 I mean, literally he is the equivalent of a biology teacher at a community college. I mean, it's a reasonably respectable small liberal arts college, but when push comes to shove, it's a, it's a small college in Minnesota. Yeah. He's effectively a teacher at a community college. He does almost no actual science work, and he's a vicious, nasty bully. Yes. And he gets off on it merely by waving around his credential as a biology teacher. Oh, I'm sorry, he has a PhD in biology. That must make him a super genius. Now, my high school freshman year, a biology class had a PhD guy teaching in it, Mr. Gusecki, Dr. Gusecki. I mean, really, I, these, I think what happens is with a lot of people, they want to be scientists. They, they grow up admiring scientists. They see the glamor of science. And so they pursue a PhD and they get one because in a lot of fields, especially if you're not picky about the institution, you can get one. And they really aren't any good at science at all. So they go, yeah. they, they, they make themselves important by putting themselves on the skeptic train yes. and, or, or the, uh, the atheist train and the anti-religious train. And I'm going to run around and point out blitheringly stupid, obvious things like, well, evolution has happened and, uh, you know, God in the gaps is dumb. I, it's like, it's such low rent stupidity. Yeah. Um, because... The, the, the other dirty secret is there's a glut of science PhDs. There's a glut of PhDs in general. I predict in 10 years that the, 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 the letters PhD might actually take on a bad odor. It's gotten that bad on how poor quality 
PhDs get turned out all over the place. A lot of PhDs who worked hard for their PhDs complain about it too um, because they're seeing how easy it is to get those three letters on the end of their name, your name, especially if you've got the money and the connections. Yeah. Um, again, now I just got off on a rant, but how, you know, that's the, that's one of the things that's so toxic. Now, I grew up admiring scientists. I really did. And part of it was, was it because I think I was an atheist. And so I got interested in science in part because I thought I would find ultimate answers in there. Yeah. Um, uh, which I think a lot of atheists do. Um, you're not gonna, by the way. Although, actually, I don't know. Look at the digital physics theory and some cosmology. <laughs> but... Yeah, uh, these people don't know science at all. Atheists do not know science at all. 99% of them, they do not know science. Yeah. They, they literally speak of it like a god that brings them things. And like, that, that can't be disobeyed. I actually saw one recently say, if you disagree with a scientist, you're just plain wrong. I'm like, really? They don't understand how science works. They, 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 yeah. they think that, that science is a doctrine. And, and, and it, it is it is of one voice, and that there's absolutely no dissent. No, so science is this multitude of competing voices that and often contradict each other. And and that's why I hate when, when atheists say, "Oh, well, the story science gives us." No, science does not give us a story. It gives us it gives us a multitude of stories. Well, you know what I've noticed too is that the creationist wars help feed this ridiculous science versus religion debate yes. that keeps going on forever and ever and ever and is a complete distraction for most of us it, yes it, it truly truly is i i just don't <laughs> i actually think organized atheism encourages it because it gives them plot when they argue with the creationists all the time I can tell you, I mean, as an atheist, I would watch creationists and atheists debate. And I tried to get involved a little, um, but mostly I was trying to get involved to try and tell atheists why their reasoning was bad, um, which is why I got hated, I guess. But it was, it's been real obvious to me that in most creationist atheist debates, creationists usually really win much of the time. They really do. They win yeah. more often than they lose. And it's par and pa painfully embarrassing to watch. And it's not necessarily because young earth creationism is true. I mean, maybe it is. Exactly. I, I, I doubt it. But, 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 but it's because it's so trivially easy to beat atheists, ideological atheists. They're so stupid about it. Yeah. I mean, Who they simply fall back on, on this presumption that they are science, that they own science. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like, but I mean, it gives, and people like Ken Ham are popular in the media because they give plausibility to this otherwise ludicrous science versus religion stuff, which yes. feeds into all these other weird talking points about God and the gaps. And, oh, uh, you know, we used to believe that magic fairies made the winds blow, but now we know it's air pressure or some. <laughs> Well, the, oh my God! That's the thing is, you 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 can never you can never fathom the depth of atheist dumb. It, it it always goes deeper than than you expect. And that was the one thing. It's like, well, you know, we figured out how rainbows. You know, you don't need God to make a ra like. What what Christian ever said that <laughs> you can't have a scientific explanation of rainbows? But that was a popular talking point. I saw it come up again and again and again. You know? Yeah. And even though I don't necessarily think we need a literalist view of, of, of things, especially in the early books of the Bible, really most of the Old Testament, it's always a mistake to read it super literally. Jews will tell you that too. Serious Jews will. Uh, but, uh, you know, here you go, kids. God controls the laws of physics. Therefore, if God altered the laws of physics to make rainbows happen due to light diffraction, yeah, bang, there you go. There's your explanation. It's not it, once you once you have a, a mature understanding of God, which is that God is the infinite intelligence that's running things like the laws of physics and probability, making them go, as I say so often. Um, stories like that. I mean, I actually think there's more to the story of the rainbow than that, right? But 
um, it's not too hard to sit there and go, oh, okay, you mean the laws of the universe changed in that moment? Yeah, well, God could do that easily. So yeah. that would be the most, you know, simplistic well, yeah. explanation for that. Well, huh? Nobody is claiming that rainbows in general need need a, a miracle to occur. That would be that would be the God's ordinary providence that that allows rainbows in in the general to occur. I mean, there's you not, will there's you no will miracle. find you will find primitive religious thinkers who think that way, and they're not very bright and they're not very thoughtful and they don't need to be because you know what? Not everybody's all that bright in this world, and you can't make. A, a, a low IQ person, a high IQ person. Uh, you know, you meet somebody with an 85, 90 IQ and all they've got is, yeah, God put that there. Shut up. Let him think it that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, really, he doesn't need a lecture from you on prisms and light diffraction or, you know, he can barely read. Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, uh, pedantry, yes. Yeah, you don't need to do that. And you're not going to enlighten his world any, anyway. You're just not, you know, by explaining light diffraction. And therefore, you can dismiss your magic fairy friend. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's, those, those are, that's, it's a, it's a, certainly a, could supply a lot of new atheists. Just say, okay, well, the, mag, the magic fairy didn't do that. Oh, well, now I've seen the light of reason and science. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at least when I was an atheist, I was reading, well, and that's the thing, too. There's this glut of pop science writers, and they're just such trash. Like Jerry Coyne, what an idiot. Lawrence Krauss, what an idiot. Disingenuous, too. I, I mean, they know what they're doing. Yeah. I'm so, that's sure they all do at this point, huh? That's really a tragedy if, if you're, you know, 13 or 14 nowadays. Oh, I want to get into science. And then you encounter those kind of ideologues, and you have to go. You have to go under this kind of ideological grooming before you can even get on to the actual science. So, uh, so kids these days are growing up in a poisoned environment. E e even no, they really are. Really affable people like Neil deGrasse Tyson will still put his his own uh, uh, ideological spin on things. You know. Oh, and he does and it he constantly. Claims, he claims he's giving his opinion reluctantly. No, he, he volunteers at pretty much at every opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's so off-putting. I mean, he says he's not an atheist, and that's fine, but he still touts this weird scientific naturalist materialist line, this condescending, patronizing, and just plain wrong frequently yeah. view of what smart religious people think, and it's just it's it's maddening. I, I, ah, oh shit, I had a point I wanted to back you up on, and then I forgot what it was. Well, I, I was going to, while well, you think of that, uh, you said before that atheists actually encouraged the young earth creationism, and I, there's actually a quote from Richard Dawkins where he was asked, uh, would you support more Christians becoming like theistic evolutionists or, or old earth creationists, or, or do you think that Christians... Uh, uh, should just stick to their gut. Not that there's any oh. gut, stick to, but the Christians should just kind of like double down on a, on a young earth creationist. And he said, no, Christians should absolutely be young earth creationists. So yeah. people actually yeah. interested in science. He, he just is, he is fight. just is opposing Christianity. Yeah, He's no, I've seen that too. Believing the correct scientific thing. Atheists desperately want all Christians to be young earth creationists. Yes. And young earth creationists who hear that ought to pause and at least think about that. Because even if you're right, at some level, you're not. I mean, young earth creationists actually did turn me away from the Bible. It repelled me, uh, even when I was an atheist. Because even when I was an atheist, though, I could see why the atheists would lose. I mean, you know, and it, it just, it was so stupid to watch. It was just painful for me. But to back up something you were saying earlier about peer review, yeah, in, in the soft sciences, the social sciences, especially like psychology, sociology, it's well known that, that peer reviews melted down badly. Um, and ideological materialism, scientismic garbage, gobbledygook, and postmodernisms all over it. You see less of it in the hard sciences, although it's there. And there have been obvious efforts to get into the hard sciences. 
one of the one of the dirty secrets is that physicists and others in the hard sciences are much more likely to be religious than like social scientists who yeah. are into things like psychology. In fact, the majority, I mean, it's it's a majority of, of, of physicists and a majority of Nobel Prize winning physicists at that for that matter. Yeah, and that yeah. actually turns out because if you study physics, if you study theoretical physics, oh my God, the spiritual and theistic implications are all over cosmology and QM. They really are. I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead, Rob. Well, no, that, that's the thing, of course. Atheists love citing their 20-year-old their uh, informal survey of the National Academy of Sciences that they use. Was, you know, 93% of, of, elite, of elite scientists are atheists. They, they love throwing that out. But, uh, yeah, look at, look at Nobel Prize winners. You can't get much more uh, elite than that. And 65% uh, of Nobel laureates in physics are, are Christians. So that's that's documented. Yes, it's, it's extremely common for for higher level physicists to be theists. The atheists are in the minority there, and they're starting to feel it. And I know they're starting to feel it. This is the other reason the way worm is turning. I, if you ever watch much Frank Turek, he talks a lot about science and faith, and he mostly gets it right. By the way, I mean I don't know that he always does, but he he mostly does. Yeah, he, he and more and more, more and more. Christians and theists in general need to figure this out. Even though I criticize Turek and some of the others because I do think they do that whole thing. Look, you know, physics affirms this. This requires an intelligent designer, therefore Jesus, which is a huge, which is actually a bigger leap than you need to make. Um, yeah. And that's just, it's just honest to acknowledge that. Um, but at the same time, no, science is completely on the theist side at this point. Yeah. Um, Atheists really, if they're talking about science, uh, science is no longer on their side. It's done a flip. Quantum physics is not on their side. Cosmology is not on their side. Biology is not even on their side. It's, it's, there is a supernatural, there is every reason to believe in the supernatural now. I'm sorry. You just, it, there's every reason to believe we have a soul. There's every reason to believe there's reality far beyond the four forces of physics. Yeah. It's, there's, it's ludicrous at this point to deny it. And it, it, whenever an atheist starts talking burden of proof and brings up science, uh, I immediately start demanding that they give better explanation, you know, give some kind of explanation for all the science that's actually on the theist people's side. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the worm is turning. I think what may actually happen, although I think we got another, we got a long road ahead of us because there's millions of these young chucklehead atheists now, um, is the um it's it's done intellectually atheism actually ran out of gas years ago yeah. there's nothing to it gen z is coming up weren't you telling me you've seen surveys and stuff about oh, definitely. There's, there's, there's i'm seeing it in the, but the people in the, their teens and 20s too but i'm sorry what yeah i i mean i i could point you to, to three pieces of to three surveys i even showed you like the, the harvard crimson that's already showing the uh the Harvard Crimson always does a little survey of the belief the beliefs of its freshman class every year. And yeah, I, the tide turning there, you can point to other studies that show that that actually show uh, it's not a matter of, well, they're, they're still living at home with their folks. So their folks bring them to church. No, if, if you look at like church attendance among Gen Z uh, compared with, with uh, the millennials and with Gen X, when they were the same age, uh, Gen Z is is uh, substantially more church going. Yes. Yeah, they are. And I talk to them. It's really interesting. I mean, I talk to people of all ages, but the most interesting young people I talk to, it's funny. I have this idea that uh, cranky Gen Xers, cranky middle aged Gen Xers, and young punk Gen Zers are going to wind up talking some sense into surly millennials who were poorly taught <laughs> by their parents. Yes. Um, because really these, these 25 to 35 year old atheists, are, and oh my God, they're just, they just believe whatever the crap they see in movies like Religious by Mil Bill Maher and, and what they hear on secular talk and, Oh and my God! It's just it so is disastrously disgusting. Dumb. Huh? It is a disgusting, uh, indolent self-satisfaction that that you just see as just as just indicative of, of millennial entitlement. So, <laughs> it, well, it, and, it, cynicism, it, and cynicism, 
millennials are very cynical and they have reason to be. Millennials yeah. have been screwed over a lot of ways. They have reason to be cynical, but uh, just embracing the cynicism is not going to get it. Yeah. It's not. Uh, just embrace the cynicism and then go ahead and die of the drug overdose or whatever. I mean, who cares, right? Die of auto asphyxiation. Man, you just embrace that nihilist, cynical, skeptical of anything that doesn't make sense to you, that, that doesn't match what you already think, and you wind up, you wind up eating a gun or something eventually. You really yeah. do. Um, it's not a, a healthy way of looking at the world. Well, we called this Max's journey, but we really didn't talk about that any. But that's all right. I don't mind. Um, we certainly talked about our, what I remembered. Because basically, I like. sometimes I still wish I were an atheist just so I could give lessons to young atheists on how not to be horrible when you're an atheist. Yeah. Because I, for the most part, knew how not to be horrible and how not to be dumb when I was an atheist and, and, and to not act like I, like I'm just automatically the smartest brain in the world room because I'm the first one to figure out that there's reason to question the idea that there's a God. Yeah. <laughs> just holy cow, man. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've actually talked enough. Is there anything else you wanted to chat about? Uh, no, I'm good. All right. Well, I enjoyed this hangout. I know it was kind of free form everybody, but uh -huh. I hope you all liked it too. Uh, please give us a like, please give us a subscribe, please give us your financial and spiritual support, and uh, check out Rob's channel, Deflating Atheism. Also join, remember, most escaping atheism content is now on the Max Kolbe channel for a variety of reasons. So come find us on the Max Kolbe channel. All right, God bless, everybody. God bless.